Solar by Green Greg here, and today I'm going to talk about are solar panels worth it? I'm going to talk about the seven factors that determine whether solar panels are worth it. Then I'll also discuss local electric rates, and then we'll look at a solar design and what the 25 year savings are with solar to see if it's worth it. And then at the end, I'll give you my conclusion and the forward advice for homeowners. So let's get right into it. So factor number one is the electric use in kilowatt hours annually. Obviously the higher electric use, the more likely solar panels are worth it. Number two, electric rates. Again, the higher the local electric rates, the more likely it is that solar will be worth it. The net metering policy. This is how the utility company bills you and also compensates you for solar generated electricity. This is also a very big factor and it varies state to state and utility to utility. So you have to find out for your individual utility. The roof solar potential. So the shading, the minimal amount of shade is better of course, and the orientation, whether it's south, west, or east, or a combination of those. South being the roof that generates the most electricity, by the way. And we always avoid, if possible, the north roof is a very last resort because that gets the least amount of sun. It sometimes is used in very extreme circumstances where somebody has really high electric rates and maybe the other roofs have already been filled up, but north is always a last resort. The local climate. So obviously a home in the Tampa Bay area gets a different amount of sun than a home in Atlanta or Cleveland or LA for instance. So the local climate plays a role. The solar system price and the incentives. So there's a federal tax credit that all 50 states can get and there also might be some state and local incentives and this can have a big impact on whether solar is worth it or not. So let's take a look at the utilities in Tampa Bay area. So it says here, Tampa Electric customers can expect energy bills to increase 9.8% starting in April. By then, the average customer's bill will have risen 62% from 2019 from 99.53 to 161.13. That's, that's ridiculous. 62% in less than four years. Ridiculous. But they're a monopoly. You don't have any choice but to pay it. It's either pay it or turn off all your electric? I don't think so. Let's look at another utility. The commission also approved an increase of 15.1% spread over 21 months for Duke Energy Florida. So 15.1% over less than two years. Again, ridiculous, but they're, they're monopoly. And then Florida Power and Light will increase their electric rates by 8.3% and in the peninsula, 10.3%. So these are really large increases. You know, in the past, we've always seen increases, but these are larger than I would say normal. And I don't know if that's going to be in our future. It doesn't keep happening or not, but you have nothing to do but just to pay for it because they're a monopoly and you're stuck unless you get solar. Now this article blames stubborn high fossil fuel costs, but also they are also facing costs from storms. So they say storm damage, and that has also increased costs. <clears throat> but the point being is, hey, if you stick with the utility company, they're a monopoly. You don't have a choice but to pay their bill, right? Or you can turn off all your lights and not use any electric. And we all know that ain't happening. So, so the choice is easy. And again, if you're with a different utility or you're a different state and locality, I'd really recommend you look online and Google your local electric company and see what their rate increases have been. It's, most electric companies have been increasing their electric bills on a regular basis, but most homeowners don't realize it because sometimes they just pay the bill, right? Sometimes they even have auto pay where the bill is automatically paid. So the only time a homeowner will recognize an increase is when they actually get a real high electric bill and go, geez, I've never had a bill that high before, usually in the summer months. So 
Solar is about taking control and generating your own electric. Okay, so let's look at the actual math of paying the utility company over the next 25 years. Okay, so I showed you the rate increases with the utility companies, but let me just show you how this math adds up. So an electric bill average of $200 a month with an average increase of 4% a year. Now, I'm being very modest, by the way, with 4%. I just showed you the local electric companies have more than doubled that. However, I'm trying to be rather modest for the long term and say 4%. So $200 a month now is $2,400 a year. With 4% increase a year, this bill is almost $234 a month or $2,800 a year. By year five, you would have spent almost $13,000 with a local utility company. Let's just fast forward here and go to year 15. Year 15, that $200 electric bill is now $346 or over $4,100 a year. Over 15 years, you'll spend $48,000 with the local utility company. Maybe more, we don't know. And let's face it, you're gonna be buying electric, right? <laughs> it's not a question if you're gonna buy electric, it's how much you're gonna pay for it. So 48,000, you could have already bought your solar system and had it paid before that. But let's look at year 25 because solar panels are warranted 25 years. Well, in 25 years, you would have spent almost $100,000 with the utility company, 100,000. 100,000, you could have bought a few solar systems by then. That's like a retirement nest egg. So don't give it to the utility company. <laughs> Instead, get your own solar system. So here's an actual solar design for a home in the Tampa Bay area. As you can see here, I put panels on the south facing roof straight down to south. We do not put any panels on the north roof facing towards the pool because obviously north gets the least amount of sun. Okay. This particular home, it had a bill of roughly about $200. It required 25 solar panels. Um, the system size is 10,000 watts. Uh, the system is producing over 15,500 kilowatt hours AC. And that's covering over a little bit over 100% of their electric use. Let's take a look and see what the return on investment and payback is. Okay, so for this particular home, the estimated savings over 25 years is over $85,000. The payback period is eight and a half years. So eight and a half years, it'll pay for itself. The return on investment is 12.1% a year. Now, can you tell me any other investment where you're gonna get paid 12.1% a year, year after year for 25 years? I don't think so. And by the way, this is again, with just a very modest increase of 4% increase in electric rates per year. If the electric rates go up more than that, and they might, then the return on investment will be even better and the payback will even, even be less years than 8.5. So I'm being very modest here. This bar chart is very similar to the spreadsheet that I showed you. So this bar chart in the blue, this is if you do nothing. Electric rates going up and up and up. These orange bars are what the utility bill is with solar because you still have some minimum fees you have to pay with solar even though you're covering 100% of the electric. So as you can see here, in year one, we're already saving $2,100. The new utility, you're spending about $143. But let's fast forward here to five years. In 2028, you're saving over $2,400, okay? So this is almost like, hey, you're investing this money and it's paying you dividends back each year, okay? So, in this case, this home solar system is a very good investment for this homeowner. It makes financial sense. Um, and of course, again, it might be different for your locality depending on your home, your local circumstances, okay? Okay, so I just showed you the 25 year savings, but did you know that the local utility companies themselves are doing solar farms? So here's Tico, Tampa Electric. They're doing a bunch of solar farms. And let's face it, they got the finance people and the accountants crunching the numbers, and they know that solar works, that solar's worth it. Otherwise, they would not be spending these umpteen millions of dollars on these solar farms, right? 
but they're not the only ones. Here's Duke Energy in Florida. They also are doing a bunch of solar farms. And by the way, not just in Florida, but even in other states, Duke is doing solar farms. So if these big shot billion dollar companies know that solar is worth it, then what does that tell you about solar? It's probably worth it. Otherwise, they wouldn't be spending all this money on solar. So in conclusion, what I would tell homeowners is, hey, every home is different. And those seven factors, they play a role. But by the way, it's not a complete checklist. But get a few quotes and see how the numbers turn out. Now, in a lot of cases, solar is going to make sense. But there's going to be certain situations where solar doesn't make sense, such as, hey, if your home or building is surrounded by a bunch of trees and there's no sun on it or very little sun on the roof, then solar ain't going to make sense, right? Or, hey, if you're spending $60 a month on electric, then, you know, obviously solar is not going to save you much money, right? So those are sort of factors that need to be taken into account. And also, again, a lot of those other factors we talked about, like the net metering and so on. So get a few different quotes and then just see if the numbers make sense or not. Okay, so I hope you found this video helpful. So Solar by Green Greg here, and on this channel we cover home solar PV, solar pool heating, and energy efficiency. And I do it all without any sales talk. You see, I've been in the solar industry now for 16 years, so I know all the insider secrets, the tips and tricks, but I'm also a homeowner just like you, and I know how it is. You don't want sales talk. You just want some information and maybe you're just trying to do some light troubleshooting. If that's you, you just want information, hey, you're in the right spot. Go ahead, hit subscribe, hit that thumbs up, hit that notification bell. Oh, by the way, 98% of the people who watch my videos don't subscribe. You know, I don't do any promos on this channel. I'm just trying to help educate homeowners. And when you subscribe, you let YouTube know that this content is valuable and to show it to more homeowners. So please help me level up by subscribing. Oh, and by the way, in the comments, hey, let me know where you're from. It's always fun to know where people are from and how far my voice is reaching people. It's so gratifying. Thank you so much. Have a great sunny day. Bye-bye for now.